Every year, I love to create a Halloween scene and share the assets with you so you can make your own spooky creations. Last year, We Broke the Fairy Tale sent me this footage of how they use the assets in their game, which was fantastic to see. This year, I'm making even more assets to add to the scene, so I hope you'll find lots of ways to use them. If you do, then please tag me in any posts so I can see what you've made. In this video, I'll show you how I created the assets and put together this scene. Link in the description for the asset pack. So, like I said, I already had a scene from last year, so I decided to add a house to it to make it more interesting. So I started the house in a completely new scene and just wanted to get the size of the house and the shape of the house first, so started with a cube. I brought in a cylinder as a reference for the height of a person. It's very important to have an actual reference for a height of a person so you can line the objects up correctly with each other. And the first thing I'm doing is getting the outline shape. Once I've got that, then I start building up the structure, so the wooden posts and frame. I add a bit of detail to this one to go in, start distorting it and making it look crooked. And then I duplicate that across the shape and adapt it slightly. You can see I also reduce the height of the building. I thought I'd just do one layer to start off with and then add layers as separate modules. So I can just build one module, adapt it slightly and then add it onto the top. It's very important if you are copying and pasting to actually adapt the shape slightly. It's really obvious when there's repetition across the shape. So you can see I've copied the first piece of timber across the other side and then adapted it slightly. The same for the roof beam here. I had lots of variation in to give it that sort of warped, crooked look. I use a mirror modifier to speed up the workflow, but I apply the mirror later on so I can adapt the shapes again so they don't look uniform and too similar. Once I've got the basic outline, then I can add some details like a door. So I again copy a piece of the frame, adapt it slightly, distort it, move it about and make it wonky. I wanted to do a loop cut down the middle of this object, but it's actually a little bit awkward to do loop cuts through n-gons and triangles, which are created when you do things like bevel. So I had to tidy the shape up in order to do a loop cut down the middle. But the extra loop cut allowed me to create these kind of split effects, which I thought were quite interesting and made it look like old worn wood. I also sometimes slide the vertices into each other, making sure they merge. And that adds a little bit of distortion, crookedness and interest to the shape. So for this process, I quite like things like n-gons and triangles because it does add that distortion and wobbliness to your objects. And again, you can see me duplicating the objects, adapting them slightly and then repositioning them for this door shape. Now here I wanted to add some panelling. You don't really see it in the final image because it's a bit too much of a silhouette, but you would if you were closer into the objects. So I like to add that little bit of detail and again go in, do some loop cuts, add some distortion, make it all wobbly and that's perfect. And then from here I just add a few more details in, so a door with some wooden slats and I just use a bevel so it's all one object, beveled and then I create the sort of slats from the loop cuts. I wanted to add quite a lot of distortion to these shapes and often it's just a case of going in, doing some cuts. You do sometimes need to tidy up a bit. You can see here I'm having to tidy up very bad topology that kind of distorts the shape. I do like that distortion of the shape but you can sometimes go a bit too far so you have to clean up a little bit. But I like all these notches and splits. I think they add a lot of character. And generally speaking you can just go in with the knife tool or the bevel tool and cut things up and move things about. If you ever need to tidy up, you can just delete a few faces and add them in again, like you can see I'm doing here. At this point, I wanted to create an opening for the door, so I repositioned some of my topology so I could just delete some faces. But actually, I made a slight mistake here. I should have copied the shape first because then I could use it as a module. But instead, I rushed forward, cut it out, and then I had to add it back in later for the second module. Not that it was a big problem. Now at this point I thought it was important to really consider the size and shape so I've got my cylinder or pretend person off to the side there so I can get the right size and shape for this first module. Then I can continue adding things like a window which you can see me doing here. Again a simple case of just adding a cube and extruding it out for the shape. I repositioned the object origin so that I can create a mirror. Again this is just to speed up my workflow. Once I'm happy with the rough shape, then I can go in and apply the mirror and start distorting it and making it look weird and wonderful. Again, the same process, adding notches and twists and warping the wood. For the glass in the middle, to match the shape, I select an edge loop that's in the middle and duplicate it, separate it from the object and then fill in the face. 
I then go in with the knife tool, cut it up so it's into sections and I can use these edges as the leading for the glass. It's much easier to create this as a separate object, it's far easier to texture. Once I've finished this first module, then I can take bits of it, pull it apart, adapt them slightly and have lots of different modules. So you can see me copying the window and then just changing it, adapting it and making it look slightly different. I can then easily create lots of modular pieces of the building using different windows and I can have them separately in the pack if people want to use the windows somewhere else. And you can see me here creating a new module, experimenting with the size a little bit and the shape as well. I'm using proportional edit to create big changes. And I'm also starting to experiment now with the placement of how they're going to fit on top of each other at crooked, distorted angles. I think these modules are working nice, so I start to think about how to create the roofs. So I can have some modules that have roofs and some that are just stacked on top of each other. Again, it's a nice simple process. I start with a plane this time and then just push it into position. Because again, I want it all warped and distorted, I need to change the shape of the module below. And once I'm happy with that, then I can start thinking about the details of the roof. Before adding any details though, I make sure I'm happy with the position. The pointiness of the top of the roofs is kind of an important feature. It makes the whole building seem kind of spiky. Again, I add a mirror just for ease and speed. And I don't think I actually apply this one in the end, so I keep that mirror. There's enough distance between each side of the roof, so I don't have to worry too much about them looking too similar. And for the tiles, I just bevel certain areas, raise them or lower them, so they kind of look like they're overlapping slightly. At first I add a solidify for the thickness, but I do optimize them later so they can be used in games and there's less faces. I do some optimization where possible. It's not too important these days. Lots of polys don't seem to matter so much. So there's still a fair bit of overlapping geometry and that sort of thing, which again, it doesn't matter with the current state of game engines and platforms that games are released on. Poly count really isn't as big a deal as it used to be. For the front here, you can see I've taken just the door and I'm duplicating it, moving it about a bit and just slotting it into position. You can also see that I've turned on face direction so I can see when I'm looking through my object, all those red bits, I need to kind of hide them so we can't see through and have any holes. Again, I add a mirror here and apply it later so it doesn't look too similar from side to side. In terms of color palette, I go with something quite simple. I got greens and browns, it seem to make sense, but in the final image, you don't see much of that because it's all silhouetted behind the moonlight. For the sake of the modules, I create lit windows and unlit windows, mainly keeping everything dark and with autumnal colors, so greens, browns, and yellows. I start building up the modules a bit with some snapping. I just grab some of the windows, place them in, see how they're gonna look on the actual modules. Now I'm fairly happy with the modules, I can go in and start adapting them slightly. I add this sort of pointy curliness to the ends of the roofs and add that sort of effect a lot to different aspects of each module. So with a bit of editing, the final asset pack ended up looking like this. It includes a house that I've built out of the modules, but it's very simple to create your own house. You can just take the pieces, stack them on top of each other, overlap them slightly. It's easier to turn the rotation off when you're using snapping, but you just snap them into each other, pile them on top of each other, and even stick them out of corners and all sorts, and it looks quite fun as an end result. Something that's amazing about Blender is you can literally copy and paste from scene to scene. So you can select a object, press Control C, and then go into your next scene and press Control V and paste it in. So I just grabbed that house, pasted it in, and it was nice and simple. And you can see me creating the fog here. I've just got a box and I'm putting a gradient on it. So it's got a bit of fog at the bottom of the scene. Then it's just a case of repositioning objects, adding a few lights, bit of fog glow in the compositor, and you end up with a beautiful scene like this. So there we have it, 2024's Halloween scene. Let me know how you use the assets, and remember to tag me in any posts.